welcome to my art classes. I'm John Mason, artist and illustrator. I'm glad you joined me for episode four. If you've been practicing all the things I talked to you about in the first three episodes, measuring and observing shapes, looking for the shape of negative spaces, you should now be producing reasonably accurate drawings. Next, you need to consider composition. So in this episode, we're going to explore the basic concepts of composition because composition can make or break an artwork. I'm sticking to the basics because I don't want to overload you with information. We can go into composition in depth in a future episode. You've probably heard a lot of different rules or concepts. Probably the most famous is the golden ratio or divine proportion. The Fibonacci sequence is often quoted as the proportions of nature, but that's not supported by science. Another is the rule of thirds. Many camera viewfinders have a grid marked in thirds. So let's examine some of these. The golden ratio is a complex mathematical formula that can be simplified to 62%. The Fibonacci sequence works out to almost the same. The rule of thirds can be simplified to 67%. So not a lot of difference, and both work well. These relate to how things should be positioned and proportioned. But I'd like to start you off with a very simple, easy to remember, don't do guide. The Union Jack. Here's how it works. Nothing sitting on the edge of the page. Nothing down the centre. Nothing across the centre. Nothing going across the diagonals out of the corners. That's the Union Jack rule. Following the Union Jack rule will stop you dividing your composition into separate images. But let's look at some positive ideas. If you have multiple items, decide which or who is the hero. And the hero should be at one of those ratio intersections. These are the intersection points. And if you were to position just a fraction inside of those points, you'd be pretty much dead on the golden rule. If the hero is a person, then while they're looking at directly out in the centre works, but get their eyes at the one-third horizontal. If they are looking away, you should give them head space or gazing space. That's a little bit of space in front of them. Sometimes a counterbalance is needed. Here, Monet has a large haystack as the hero at the one-third position, and he's counterbalanced it with a smaller haystack, sized to the golden rule. Another composition concept is the arabesque, a sweeping movement that leads the eye. John Constable has used it here to lead you into the scene. In this work, Rembrandt has used greater contrast, where the hero is illuminated much better to focus your attention. Another composition tool is creating a triangular shape with people or objects. Here, Edward Manet has used a triangle. Here are three women in a very ordinary composition. But change it to a triangle and it becomes much more dynamic. Of course, if you combine any of these with the golden rule, they become very powerful. You can put fancy grids with loads of diagonals and grids over almost any in image and find bits that line up. But it's the whole that matters, so don't get tied up in the mathematics. With landscapes or cityscapes, an important factor is to include a background, a middle ground and a foreground creating depth. Consider allowing objects to hang off the edge. It's called bleeding. 
it creates a sense that there's more to the scene. This is particularly useful in landscapes. For example, a foreground tree hanging in creates depth. Here's a simple drawing of a car driving by a lake. But should the drawing be about the lake or about the sky? Is the car leaving? Or is the car coming in? See how the positioning creates different atmospheres. Why not cut up a couple of pieces of cardboard? I've painted these bits of cardboard red on one side and grey on the other. I made it red so that you can easily see it on the video. And then you get your rough drawing, your sketch, your thumbnail, your idea for the, your next painting. And you use these two L-shaped pieces to work out how you should crop or position the image on your canvas. So whether you're going to close in or whether you're going to expand out. And you can work out all these things before you commit to the final work. The red's probably a bit bold for most purposes, so maybe you'd be more comfortable using the grey side or perhaps paint the other side a different colour. But it's an easy way to try out different compositions. Testing composition alternatives on your thumbnail sketches will lead you to better drawings and paintings. The thumbnails can be very rough so long as you understand the elements in your sketch. Don't be afraid to experiment. Actively seek alternatives. In the next episode, I want to show you shading techniques. Shading or rendering pumps life into a drawing. So until then, keep drawing. Artists, we know where to draw the line. <laughs>